Welcome to the Medical Coding course on YouTube. Here, you learn how to think like a medical coder and pick up all the fundamentals necessary to start grasping more complicated concepts. So, let's get started. This course is divided into the following lesson plan. 1. Introduction 2. Healthcare law requirements to know 3. Introduction to health insurance terms 4. Pharmacology for coders 5. ICD 10 CM coding 6. CPT and Hicks PICS level 2 coding 7. Abstracting information from medical records 8. New patients, insurance claims, and EOPS 9. Medicare Parts A, B, C, and D <coughs> Lesson 1. Introduction in order to be hired as a professional medical coder, employers look for certain personal qualities in their applicants. Some of these qualities are professionalism, being ethical, being reliable, being self-motivated, etc. During an interview process, it is your goal to communicate your best qualities to an interviewer. We'll discuss more on that near the end of this video. It is the interviewer's responsibility to assess how well your personal qualities fit with their company. Some of the things are universal qualities all employers look for, however, there are specific qualities that professional medical coders need in order to succeed. 1. Being accurate with codes. 2. Knowing the basic requirements and standards followed by industry professionals. 3. The consequences of submitting incorrectly coded documentation. By taking the initiative to become certified, you are letting the employers know that you hold a credential that proves your worth. You will review all pertinent physician documentation, assign, and sequence all codes to maximize reimbursement and address any potential bundling issues. Also, you will apply modifiers to codes as needed. Don't worry we will discuss all these very shortly. If you're curious as to how much money you can make as a medical coder, you can check out link in the description which will take you to the Bureau of Labor Statistics website associated with this profession. Lesson 2. Healthcare Law Requirements to Know for Medical Coders It is essential to be familiar with the basics of the rules governing the medical industry. 1. Protected Health Information, PHI 2. HIPAA's Privacy and Security Rules 3. Fraud and Abuse to get things started, note that a physician provides the medical care to fix a problem that the patient is facing. The level of care provided has to be sufficient, not excessive. If a doctor provides excessive care and charges patients extra for that care through insurance or Medicare claims, a physician can lose his or her license and face legal consequences. As a medical coder, you are an essential line of defense against false claims, and it is your job to alert the hospital staff when something is wrong. The hospital staff and the medical professional rely on your expertise to stay in compliance and ensure that their service is appropriate. When we talk about personal health information, you can think of any of your own personal information, such as name, address, date of birth, social security numbers, etc. and think about how you would want a professional to handle this information. In the medical field, this information is considered to be protected health information or PHI. Next, let us think about how to handle the protected health information. You treat a patient's personal health information as confidential. It is the responsibility of anyone working in as a medical professional to not share or disclose information that has not been authorized. Although confidentiality is a legal requirement, it's much easier to think of it as an ethical responsibility. If a patient trusts you with their personal and private information, consider it your duty to not violate that trust. Now let's get into Health Insurance Portability and Accountability Act, or HIPAA. You can think of this standard as simply the legal law enacted to prevent abuse of protected health information, or PHI, we just discussed. What specific rights do patients have under the HIPAA privacy rules? Patients can access their health records, they can request corrections if they find errors, they can restrict disclosures, etc. Patients can file complaints with the Office of Civil Rights if they suspect any violations. 
a patient's medical information may be disclosed if it is for treatment or payment for health services. If a patient's information has to be disclosed, generally healthcare professionals make a reasonable effort to disclose only the least amount of information required. This is also called minimum necessary information. The HIPAA rules also protect an individual's privacy over the Internet by enforcing the same standards when it comes to transmitting information electronically. Lastly, let us look at healthcare fraud and abuse. Fraud generally consists of billing more for services by opcoding, altering medical records, or misrepresenting the frequency of services provided. Abuse is when the medical coder or the physician makes an error, bills inadvertently, or does not have sufficient documentation for a particular claim. When it comes to fraud and abuse, the Office of Inspector General, OIG, develops anti-fraud compliance programs to help medical professionals minimize billing and coding errors. The OIG also protects the integrity of the Medicare and Medicaid programs by monitoring fraudulent activities. Lesson 3 Introduction to Health Insurance Terms 1. Insurance Carrier All of these terms mean the same thing. The insurance company. 2. Provider A provider is basically a doctor, a hospital, a nurse, a physician's assistant, PA, etc. 3. Claim A request of medical payment from the insurance company or Medicare service. Next, let's look at a couple of terms associated with insurance coverages. 1. Benefits, the amount for medical care or expenses covered by the insurer. 2. Exclusions, things that the patient has to pay out of his or her own pocket. The insurance company does not cover exclusions. Lesson 4. Pharmacology for coders. Pharmacology is the study of how drugs or medications work. Medications bind with receptors in our cells, which then affects how the cells function, which then cures our diseases. If the disease is cured when the medication binds to the receptors, the medication is acting as an agonist. However, when the medication binds to our receptors and blocks some action, the medication is an antagonist. Most of us are familiar with medications that we take either on a daily basis, when we are sick, or when a doctor prescribes something to us. Therefore, as a professional working in the industry, it is worth having an above-average knowledge of common medications prescribed to patients. For now, just know that as a professional working in the medical industry, you develop a good understanding these medications. Lesson 5, ICD-10-CM Coding In a nutshell, ICD-10-CM is a guide for disease diagnosis. An ICD-10-CM code has seven characters. The first letter of the code is always a letter. The second character is always a number, and characters 3 through 7 can be either letters or numbers. The codes listed in ICD-10-CM are specific. In fact, the specificity includes the part of the body, which side of the patient is affected, etc. A thorough understanding of coding conventions is essential for assigning codes accurately. These are covered in Section 1 at the front of the ICD-10-CM book. Be sure to review these thoroughly. Also realize that, if a code is not specific to the right number of characters, it is considered invalid. Lesson 6. CPT and HCPCS Level 2 Coding Next, let us explore the CPT and the HICSPIX books. These books have the following codes. 1. CPT, Current Procedural Terminology. 2. HICSPIX Level 2, Healthcare Common Procedure Coding System. The codes listed in these books are used for outpatient coding. Next, let us quickly discuss the various category of codes. Category 1 codes represent the most commonly performed procedures and services. Category 1 codes have five-digit numbers. When coders refer to CPT, they usually mean the Category 1 codes. Category 2 codes track the quality of care, helping collect performance measurements have five character alphanumeric codes, with four numbers followed by the letter F. Category 3 codes are temporary codes for new and emerging technology. 
They are five character alphanumeric codes, with four numbers followed by the letter T. If they don't become category 1 codes, they'll be retired. Lastly, let's discuss modifiers. Modifiers are two digit numbers added to a CPT code and connected with a hyphen. They indicate that a procedure or service has been altered in some manner, but not in a way that would entirely change the code. Lesson 7. Abstracting Information from Medical Records This is probably the most important portion of this video for medical coders. Reading medical stories and abstracting the right information for coding is essentially the job of a medical coder. Medical stories come in four major formats, soap notes, emergency department, ER, records, procedure reports, and operative reports. We will now look at the format of one of these reports as an example. Soap notes are progress reports. As the medical professionals are going through the process of evaluating symptoms and developing a diagnosis, they use soap notes to document the medical service provided. There are four main components to soap notes. Subjective. This is the chief complaint that the patient walks in the door with. Subjective documents how a patient is feeling, what she is experiencing, and simply documents what the patient says in her own words. Objective. These are the observations that the doctor based on a physical exam, lab tests, etc. These are measurable things that a doctor is trained and qualified to perform to help assess what's wrong with the patient. Assessment. This is the diagnosis that the doctor gives to the patients based on the patient's subjective statements and observations noted in the objective. Lastly, we have the plan. This is the physician's treatment plan, as well as instructions to the patient. Other records may have a different format, however, as a medical coder, there are a few common questions to ask regardless of what document is used to develop the codes. What's the diagnosis? What was the treatment? What other key pieces of documentation do I need in order to code this record? Type of treatment the patient actually received. Anatomical location of the treatment on the body? size wound, lesion, or other examination of a particular issue, the length of time that the doctor spent consulting with the patient. Remember to code only confirm diagnosis and treatments. Lesson 8. Submitting Claims and the Patient Portals Think of medical claim submission as a mix of paper-based and electronic submissions. Paper medical charts are becoming less and less common. Electronic systems are faster and more streamlined way to process storing medical information and billing for reimbursement. Hospitals generally offer a patient portal. A patient portal is scheduling an appointment, access treatment records, and make payments for services not covered in their medical plans. Lesson 10. Medicare Parts A, B, C, and D. Medicare has four distinct parts. Part A covers hospital insurance, hospital care, skilled nursing facility, hospice care, home health services, etc. There's no premium if a beneficiary is eligible for Medicare. Part B of Medicare is medical insurance associated with physician services, outpatient care, clinical lab services, etc. Medicare Part B has an extra payment associated with additional benefits. Most beneficiaries who opt to get Medicare Part B pay a premium each month. Beneficiaries also must pay an annual deductible. Part C of Medicare is the Medicare Advantage Plan. Medicare Part C is operated through private insurance companies. Medicare Part C provides both Part A and Part B benefits. Enrollees retain full rights and protections guaranteed by original Medicare. It must cover all of the services covered by Medicare, except hospice care. Part D of Medicare is the prescription drug plan. Enrollment is for Medicare Part D is voluntary. Medicare program pre-approves the companies that offer the drug plans. Each drug plan has its own set of medications that are covered. Premiums, deductibles, and copayments vary depending on the plan. That was probably the fastest explanation of Medicare you've likely ever had. However, it is sufficient for introductory purposes. Thank you so much for watching this video. Please, like, share, and subscribe.
Your engagement with this video helps keep this valuable information free and provides encouragement for creating more high-quality content. Also, be sure to leave any feedback you may have in the comments section. Bonus! How to think about a career as a medical coder. When someone gets hired at a company, he or she may stay in that position some years, decades, or even an entire career if they're lucky and satisfied. However, more and more medical professionals are becoming gig-based employees. Therefore, interviews should be an additional skill you should consider mastering. Although the advice for how to do an interview successfully is extensive, generally, practice makes perfect. Consider asking a friend or family member to pretend that he or she is interviewing candidates for a job. Give your friend or family member a series of questions to ask you and practice your responses, as if you were giving a real interview. This may not seem like a worthwhile role-play exercise, but it will give you a lot of confidence when it's time for the actual interview. If you anticipate changing jobs frequently, it may be worthwhile to take some time and plan for your next job, just as you get your current job. This may include getting more training, certifications, and developing more skills through continuous education, so you can take on additional responsibilities and earn more money. With medical coding, you also have an opportunity to work from home. If this is something that interests you, consider asking your employer for the flexibility to work from home, or only applying for jobs that offer this as a primary way of working. It's both safe and efficient to do so for both you and the employer.